What's up everybody, my name is Joe Brown and this is Heresy Financial. This week I stumbled upon a fantastic article from Mises.org about shrinkflation. It's a good article, I sent it out in my weekly newsletter and if you're not subscribed to that, if you don't know what that is, I send out every single week a newsletter which is just a curation of a couple articles that I found helpful, that I read, that I really enjoyed from that week. You can sign up, I've got it linked in the description below. So today in this video we're gonna talk about what shrinkflation is and why specifically over the last year to two years the shrinkflation that we've been experiencing has probably not been perfectly accounted for in the CPI. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so we're all familiar with what's going on right now. Inflation, the price of stuff is going up. Some of that is due to supply chains, but that's due to the government lockdowns and the rest of it is basically just so much money entered the global financial system and that money all gets spent around. That's purchasing power that emerged out of nothing that didn't require a capital investment or capital transfer from somewhere else in the economy or labor in order to produce that purchasing power. It's purchasing power created out of nothing. It all entered the economy and as it worked its way through the economy, the uh, raw materials started off and asset prices started off and it's been working its way through to end consumer goods bidding up prices. And at this point, pretty much everybody is familiar with the sticker shock they've been experiencing every time they go to the grocery store, you load up on some beef, you get some coffee, you go buy some wood for your weekend project, pretty much whatever you're doing, sticker shock, prices have been going up. But shrinkflation is kind of different. Essentially, the end result is you're still paying more money for the stuff that you're buying, but it's a little bit more deceptive of a practice. Shrinkflation refers to the size of the packaging decreasing so that the price that you pay for that item can be the same. One common area this has been showing up over the last couple of years is with canned foods. You'll notice there's no 64 ounce cans, 32 ounce cans, 16 ounce cans, or eight ounce cans anymore. Usually they're 59 or 58 ounces, 28, 29, or 30 ounces, 14 or 15 ounces, or six or seven ounces now. Now many people have pointed this out because it happens everywhere. It happens on coffee, happens on chips, happens on cans of food, it happens everywhere. And many people point at this and say the official inflation numbers are not accurate because we've experienced so much shrinkflation over the past, you know, 10, 20 years, however long it's been going on. However, the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which records the official inflation numbers, they usually weigh the items to accurately track any difference in pricing, regardless of the size of the end package. So if your can of beans went from a 16 ounce can to a 14 ounce can and the price stayed the same, that would still show up in the official inflation metrics because they weigh the items, the, they weigh the food items that go into the basket, the index. However, this weighing of food items that go into the basket for uh, measuring inflation, it has not been happening over the last year and a half, at least to the same extent that it used to, simply due to the pandemic, which means that any of the shrinkflation that we've experienced over the last year and a half has not been accurately accounted for in the official inflation metrics. And keep in mind, food is already one of the areas that is showing up most in inflation numbers right now. So if the shrinkflation was being properly accounted for right now, it would be even worse officially. Now, obviously it doesn't really matter what the official inflation metrics show because the end result is you still have to buy something regardless of what the official metrics show is inflation or not. You're still gonna either be paying more or less or the same for something regardless of those numbers. And unfortunately, Americans are so used to inflation over the past 10, 20, 30 years that tricks like this work. Whereas it used to be before about a hundred years ago, if a country would experience more than 5% inflation in a year, that would cause devastating economic Economic crises and panics, which means that prices are probably going to have to get much further out of control before the average American wakes up and realizes, hey, we're making a hundred grand a year. We're both working 50, 60 hours a week. And after our mortgage or our rent, we can't even afford to buy groceries anymore. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.